In just over a century, Hong Kong has transformed itself from a small and barren fishing village into a world-renowned metropolis with a per capita income that sits high in the global rankings. The sustainability of this achievement relies on the diligence of the Hong Kong people, their willingness to face challenges, a sound institutional framework and a caring government. The institution that takes on the important duties of enacting laws and monitoring the work of the government is our legislature, the Legislative Council. The basic law of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region allows Hong Kong to exercise a high degree of autonomy and to enjoy executive, legislative and independent judicial powers, including that of final adjudication. This lays the foundation for Hong Kong's development and the Legislative Council is one of its key players. All members of the Legislative Council are elected. The fourth Legislative Council has 60 members. Half of them represent geographical constituencies and were directly elected. The other half were returned by functional constituencies, which represent different sectors and professions in our community. Their term of office commenced on the 1st of October 2008 and will last for four years. At the first council meeting of the new term, the Legislative Council members elected a president from among themselves. A forum was held before the election to allow members to get to know the candidates. The President presides over all council meetings and exercises the powers and functions prescribed by the basic law in accordance with the council's rules of procedure. The Legislative Council members carry out three main functions enacting laws, controlling public expenditure and monitoring the work of the government. The Council normally meets every Wednesday to conduct its business which includes tabling subsidiary legislation and other papers and reports, posing questions to the government, deliberating bills and debating motions on issues of public concern. Major decisions made at council meetings have profound implications for the politics and economy of Hong Kong and the livelihood of its people. Therefore, a committee system has been established to help the Legislative Council to perform its major functions effectively. Of these committees, the Finance Committee, the Public Accounts Committee and the Committee on Members' Interests have the power to summon witnesses. The Legislative Council has also formed a House Committee and a Committee on Rules of Procedure, along with various panels, bills committees, subcommittees and select committees to conduct its work more efficiently and effectively. Given its pivotal role, it is essential that the Legislative Council is well supported. Legislative Council members form the Legislative Council Commission to provide the Council and its committees with legal advice, policy research service and administrative support through the Legislative Council Secretariat. At present, the Legislative Council Secretariat employs about 400 staff. Individual Legislative Council members may also set up offices and employ their own staff paid for through accountable expense reimbursements. The new Legislative Council complex is under construction at the Tamar site in Central and is expected to be finished by the second half of 2011. Once completed, the complex will house the Chamber, conference rooms and other facilities of the Legislative Council, the staff offices of the Legislative Council Secretariat, and the members' offices under one roof, which will make the council much more efficient. In Hong Kong, the enactment of new legislation and the amendment or abolition of existing laws are subject to the scrutiny and approval of the Legislative Council. Bills can be introduced by the government or a council member in accordance with the requirements of the basic law.
The law not only maintains our social order, but also protects the rights and interests of the public. The driving offence point system is a good example of how the lawmaking system works. This piece of legislation, which came into operation in 1984, uses a point allotting system to deter repeat traffic offenders with the aim of reducing traffic accidents. However, in recent years there has been an increase in cases of traffic offenders failing to pay fines. Drivers allotted up to 15 points and who faced losing their license even tried to avoid receiving a summons to appear in court. To plug this loophole in the law, the government amended the Road Traffic Driving Offence Points Ordinance. As a first step, the government submitted the proposed legislative amendments to the Legislative Council Panel on Transport for discussion in November 2008. The bill was then introduced to the Legislative Council in February 2009 to go through its three readings. 2009, at the council meeting, the clerk to the Legislative Council read out the short title of the bill, which marked the completion of the first reading. The Secretary for Transport and Housing, who introduced the bill, then moved the second reading. She explained the purpose of the legislation and briefly introduced the bill. The President of the Legislative Council then announced that the second reading debate would be adjourned in accordance with the rules of procedure. The bill was referred to the House Committee of the Legislative Council. At a subsequent House Committee meeting, members decided that it was necessary to form a Bills Committee to scrutinise the bill. Upon its formation, the Bills Committee elected a chairman and immediately started to scrutinise the bill. After the Bills Committee had conducted a detailed study and discussion of the bill, the second reading debate resumed at a Council meeting in May, during which members gave their views on the general merits and principles of the bill. 法案委員會原則上是支持條例草案的政策目標實在是構成難以預計的嚴重影響通過條例草案能夠幫助堵塞現行計分制的計分制的漏洞2009年道路交通違例駕駛記分修訂條例草案 a majority of the members present supported the bill, which was duly passed. The bill was then submitted to the Chief Executive for signature, promulgated in the Gazette, and was enacted into law. The government then delivered it to the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress for record.
，造成嘅環境會安全啲啦，行人又安全啦，駕駛者又安全啦。條條例通過咗咧，就會令到嗰啲慣性違例駕駛者嘅數目減少，尤其是新嘅違例駕駛者咧就唔會增加，咁對香港嘅交通安全肯定有幫助。贊成嘅其實真係一定贊成啦。其實誒誒呢個係如果真係實施咗，我諗。對個嗰個交通嘅情況都冇咁，嗰嗰個個有改善咯，我覺得係，即係冇咁猖狂啲人係咁嚟曬排，扣曬分都照揸照飛咁。我哋啊一定係贊成嘅，公眾利益啊，所有社會嘅安全咧，係唯一首要嘅啊。The Legislative Council has the responsibility of controlling public expenditure. It examines how the Hong Kong SAR government uses public money and makes appropriate decisions about expenditure, taking into account the financial situation of the government and the needs and economic situation of the community. Before the financial year comes to a close at the end of March, the Financial Secretary draws up the budget for the coming year. The budget contains the revenue and expenditure proposals for the new financial year. As the government revenue and expenditure have a bearing on the immediate interests of the 7 million people in Hong Kong, the Financial Secretary consults the public and various organizations and meets with Legislative Council members to hear their views and suggestions before delivering the budget. On the 25th of February 2009, the Financial Secretary presented the 2009-2010 budget to the Legislative Council and introduced the Appropriation Bill 2009. Acting in accordance with the rules of procedure, the President referred the budget to the Finance Committee for examination. The Finance Committee then held special meetings between the 23rd of March and 27th of March to examine the estimates of expenditure in detail before referring the Appropriation Bill 2009 back to the Council for further action. The Appropriation Bill passed through the second reading and the third reading at a subsequent Council meeting held in April. After which, it was signed by the Chief Executive, promulgated in the Gazette and formally became law. The Government introduced the revenue proposals in the Budget to the Legislative Council in the form of bills or subsidiary legislation, to which members decided whether or not to give their support. Any proposals to change the approved estimates of expenditure must be submitted by the Financial Secretary to the Finance Committee for consideration and approval. The Finance Committee meets regularly to consider such funding proposals and proposals for various other funds under the Public Finance Ordinance. The Establishment Subcommittee and the Public Works Subcommittee held the Finance Committee to examine funding proposals related to the creation and removal of directorate posts, changes to civil service grades and ranks, and funding proposals for public works. To enable the Finance Committee to perform its functions more efficiently, the Government first gives its major funding proposals to the panels concerned for discussion before submitting them formally to the Finance Committee for approval. For example, when the financial tsunami swept across the world in 2008, the credit crunch in the financial markets made it difficult for many small and medium enterprises to finance their operations. In view of this, the government announced a proposal to set up a $100 billion special loan guarantee scheme for small and medium enterprises, offering them a loan guarantee of 70%, subject to a limit of $6 million. The government first sent the funding proposal to the Legislative Council panel on commerce and industry for discussion in November 2008. Representatives from the banks and small and medium enterprises were invited to join the discussion and give their views on the scheme. The government then submitted the proposal to the Finance Committee in December 2008 for consideration. The government's proposal received the support of the committee members and the setting up of the $100 billion special loan guarantee scheme was approved by the Finance Committee. 
，無論點好，政府提出嚟報徵計劃咧，都係對啲中小企有幫助嘅。有幫助，如果唔係嘅話咧，佢資金會、呃、更加、呃、即係周轉上會產生好多困難啦。嗱，我覺得最重要咧，即係政府俾到銀行一個信心，佢哋係會撐企業。咁咧誒，佢、呃、哋會明白誒，做做撐到企業就補到神業。立法會裏邊每一位嘅立法局議員的。且確係盡心盡力，好多嘢嘅地方咧，佢哋係可以講得話係無微不至咁監察嘅。On behalf of the Hong Kong public, the Legislative Council monitors the operation and policy making of the government. Council members' views have considerable significance for decisions that affect Hong Kong's future development. At the beginning of each legislative session, the chief executive delivers the policy address to the Legislative Council to announce the policy objectives for the coming year. Legislative Council members then meet with the secretaries of the various government bureaus over the next few days through the Council's 18 panels. The secretaries and directors of each bureau brief the members of their respective panel on the areas of the policy address that come under their portfolio and discuss any questions that the members might have. Members then give their views on the policy address in the motion of thanks debate at a subsequent council meeting. The chief executive also regularly attends the question and answer sessions of the Legislative Council to answer members' questions about the government's administration. A major part of the Legislative Council meetings is taken up by oral and written questions from members to government officials on various areas of the government's work. Members also propose motion debates on issues of public interest, so that they can express their views and allow government officials to respond. The Chief Secretary for Administration also attends special meetings of the House Committee of the Legislative Council to explain important government policies. For example, Mr. Henry Tang Ying Yen, the current Chief Secretary for Administration, attended a special House Committee meeting at the end of 2008 to explain the approach and handling of an incident in which Hong Kong citizens became stranded in Thailand. For certain matters of public concern, members may also propose motion debates at Legislative Council meetings following panel discussions. One such debate was proposed on the policy on public markets, which are popular food shopping venues among the public. The policy concerned was submitted to the panel on food safety and environmental hygiene for discussion. And then a member's motion was debated at a Legislative Council meeting to allow members to state their standpoints or urge the government to take follow-up action. The Finance Committee, the Public Accounts Committee and the Committee on Members' Interests are the only three standing committees under the Legislative Council that can directly exercise the summoning powers conferred by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Other Legislative Council committees can only exercise summoning powers when authorised by a resolution of the Legislative Council. For matters of broad concern to the community, the Legislative Council can pass a resolution to authorise a particular committee to exercise powers under the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance to study matters referred to it by the Council. For instance, the Legislative Council appointed a select committee during the 2008-2009 session to inquire into matters triggered by the post-retirement employment of Mr. Leung Chin Man, former Permanent Secretary of Housing, Planning and Lands, in a senior position with a real estate group. Moreover, the House Committee also formed a subcommittee to conduct an investigative study of issues arising from Lehman Brothers related mini bonds and structured financial products. This subcommittee is authorised to exercise summoning powers. The Legislative Council also has a redress system for members of the public to express their grievances about government policies or to voice their opinions about the government's administration. Under the Legislative Council redress system, 
complainants make appointments to discuss their complaints with members. If members consider that a complaint which involves government policy needs to be discussed in greater depth, they may refer the case to the relevant panel for follow-up. For instance, after receiving a referral from the Complaints Division, the panel on Home Affairs discussed the procurement of third-party risk insurance by owners' corporations and issues related to building management. The work of the Legislative Council and the well-being of the public are closely related. Legislative Council members attend meetings and read piles of documents about the issues at hand almost every day. Their perseverance is fueled by their mission to honour their duties and to build a society that is fair, healthy and upholds the rule of law. The Legislative Council is the mouthpiece of the Hong Kong people, but only with your support can the Council achieve the best results.